Well, good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to our, our student online uh, safety presentation tonight. Thank you very much for those of you that have uh, joined us live. Um, first of all, just um, can I just ask if uh, somebody that's here, if you could just type into the chat button if you can actually hear me speaking and if you can see the student online safety here at the presentation on your screen. So if, uh, if one of the uh, people uh, present could just type yes. Uh, into that if you can see or hear. Fantastic. Thank you very much, parents. I really appreciate your quick feedback. So um, we're delighted to present this tonight. This is the first time we've done this, um, an online safety presentation in the, uh, in the online um, domain, but I hope it will pre be of some use to you um, in helping you to understand a bit more about online safety and to sort of navigate the increasingly tricky world that is, um, that is the digital domain. Um, so my, my name's uh, Gareth Hughes, I'm the Deputy Headmaster here at uh, Victoria College and with me tonight I have got uh, Mr Gosling who is the Assistant Head Pastoral at Victoria College, uh, Mr Parks who is the uh, Head of Computer Science here and PC Joel Bastable who is our uh, school's liaison officer and all of us will speak to you at, uh, at various points in the evening um, about uh, various aspects. Um, I will just go through a quick few um, housekeepings. Um, first of all, you do not need to have um, your microphones or video cameras uh, on. So if you could just mute yourselves so we don't get any, um, any interference on the line, that would be fantastic. Uh, we are recording this as well. Um, so please be assured that we will not refer to you um, if you ask a question by name. Um, we will keep those, um, that, that information um, private and uh, we will send this presentation out uh, later in the week so you can refer back to it along with some additional information. So please keep your cameras off, please keep your microphones off. Um, you will see, and some of you have already typed into the chat bar, there is an opportunity to ask uh, some questions through chat. Um, rather than um, speaking, I will ask you if you have any questions over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, uh, to type them uh, into the, the chat bar. Uh, and then at the end of the presentation, I'll have a look at them all and I'll send them out to whichever my colleagues is, uh, is best placed uh, to uh, respond to those. So uh, please don't worry, you know, ask away. There's no silly questions. Uh, we're here to, uh, to help you. So uh, just to recap again, who's, uh, who's here tonight? Uh, myself, um, I'm the deputy head. Uh, many of you, uh, if your parents um, will, will know me and probably the other colleagues here as well. Um, so I'm the deputy head and the deputy designated safeguarding lead. Mr. Gosling uh, here is the um, designated safeguarding lead, the, uh, the individual who, who leads on all of those aspects and also the assistant head pastoral. Mr. Parks, uh, the head of computer science. Uh, and as I said, PC Bastable, who's here, he's our new police uh, uh, liaison officer for the school. And I'm sure you will all get to know him uh, in due course. So uh, we'll be sort of uh, ping-ponging our way around the, the room tonight uh, to make sure that you, you hear from everybody. I will hand you over now to Mr. Gosling, who will talk you through the next little bit. Mr. Gosling. Yeah. Hello there, everybody. Um, as Dr. Hughes quite rightly outlined, I have a responsibility for monitoring e-safety and raising the profile of e-safety or online safety with our students and also with parents. You've probably noticed since the beginning of the term, we put a couple of, in the newsletters, every half term we try and put a link in and some guidance on promoting online safety. But we have a range of uh, mechanisms which we use to promote uh, online safety. PSHE, which is now a compulsory subject in Key Stage 3, where, where we implement and raise the profile of online safety. We raise it via assemblies, we bring guest speakers in from a range of different backgrounds to raise the profile of online safety and how this is going to be really important over the next few years for your sons, particularly when they in preparation for the working world, where they need to be very careful with what they post and what images they post and what comments they post, etc. As a school, we're very keen to work with parents and to promote online safety as far as we can. Hence, we're holding this evening uh, tonight and we would like to do this on a more regular basis throughout the academic year. Obviously, this is supported as well in terms of cross curriculum and computer and the computer science curriculum is one obvious area where we can promote online safety as well. So over to uh, Mr. Parks, our head of computer science, who will talk you through a little bit here. Mr. Parks. Uh, good evening, everybody. So I've got uh, three main areas to speak about in terms of the actual curriculum. The first one is a scheme of work we do in year eight for online threats. 
where we talk about uh, malicious software, we talk about hacking, we talk about viruses and all kinds of things related to anything that is obviously an online threat. Uh, what I try to do is link it to how it will affect the boys in their personal life, how it will affect them in their working life and how it affect them in their academic life. This way we can try and make it relatable to the things that are happening to them now and then obviously as it goes forth into the future. Um, we also do a, a unit on social media which is in year nine. I know that's not strictly speaking um, an online threat but what we do talk about is the negative connotations that social media can have. I'm not trying to say that it is obviously bad but there are things that can happen on there that can then endanger the boys both in their academic, personal um, and then their future working life. Um, in the GCSE and the A-level syllabus, online threats are quite a large section. Um, we go through into a lot more detail that all the different types of virus, all the different types of online threats from phishing, uh, which is where you will receive an email from somebody pretending to be someone legitimate to try and steal your data. Um, and we go into that at quite a great length. Then we look at all of the legislation which has been put in place to counter this. Um, and we want to make the point that the legislation is not there to stop it. It is there to be able to prosecute people if at any time they do do something that they shouldn't. Now I'm delighted to welcome um, PC Bastable. He's the one with the, uh, the the big picture here tonight. So you see exactly what he looks like. Um, he's coming tonight from, uh, from from the police to, to join us. So uh, I'd like to say an enormous thank you to him. Uh, on behalf of us all here, and uh, I will hand you uh, over to him. Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hughes. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone for having me tonight. My name is Joel. As uh, Mr. Hughes says, I'm the new uh, school liaison officer for Bit College. Uh, you may know I've had dealings with uh, my predecessor, Joe Carter, before. Uh, I'm the new Joe Carter, and there's my big face for you to enjoy. Um, this slide just gives you a general idea of what I do in terms of my role at the school. Um, so it's not completely to do with uh, e-safety, but uh, my role is basically to provide support and advice uh, for the school in regards to safeguarding and any methods that might be criminal. Uh, it's to share information and crime trends so that uh, students are aware of what's going on in Jersey and uh, what the police are dealing with currently uh, and deliver those inputs like tonight um, with regards to stuff that we can help uh, the boys uh, be safer. Uh, and to build positive relationships, that's really important for my role. Uh, I want the boys to trust the police and to trust me and to know me, uh, and that's uh, a big part of my role as well. So uh, this, uh, this slide is just uh, a few uh, main things which I want to pick up for tonight uh, about what we're dealing with in a policing sense, and for you to be aware as parents of, of what your boys could be uh, presented with or uh, potentially enticed by. Uh, first one there we've got Snapchat. Snapchat is the root of all evil in my opinion. Uh, nothing good has ever come off of it, but uh, it is uh, very, very popular across Jersey. Um, we get a lot of issues um, with uh, selling of drugs on Snapchat, um, broadcast messages from uh, individual uh, users of Snapchat. They can send it around their location. Uh, there's a, something called a snap map, which you need to be aware of if your child has, um, has Snapchat. Uh, it will automatically share their location to something called the snap map, unless it's turned off. Uh, this gives other users who they are friends with uh, immediate access to their location. Uh, that's important to be aware of. We're aware of drug selling, um, particularly with uh, vape selling with THC. THC is the uh, element of cannabis, uh, which uh, gets you high, it's illegal. Uh, and sweets and stuff as well that's being sold over Snapchat. Uh, YOLO that's been mentioned up there is a, is a relatively new app that you've seen uh, come to the fore most recently in Jersey at other schools as well. Uh, YOLO is a, uh, an attachment to Snapchat whereby a user can uh, share an anonymous question and receive anonymous answers from various users. So uh, I've had an instant recently whereby uh, an unnamed school student has posted who's the most hated girl in the school and then has received over 200 responses from uh, <laughs> other girls in the school uh, naming a particular individual which uh, we obviously want to avoid. Um, that kind of leads us into bullying, uh, big issues uh, on social media in terms of messaging and bullying, uh, particularly in WhatsApp groups as well I want to mention. 
uh, I like to make it very clear to, to young people that if they if they are members of a WhatsApp group, they are responsible for whatever messages are in that WhatsApp group, whether they have posted them themselves, uh, and that's a, a kind of preparation for adulthood and uh, kind of career-wise. Uh, if you do not challenge what is being put on a WhatsApp group, uh, you are culpable for it as well. Um, also wanted to mention uh, permanency of posting information online. Um, I do a lot of young people who don't realise that what they put in a Snapchat or what they put in a WhatsApp message exists forever and it never goes away. Um, it's much more different to you know, shouting at someone in the street, whoever hears it, hears it, uh, and then it's gone. Uh, something that you send in a message is there forever and can be retrieved, uh, especially by quite advanced police uh, systems that we have, especially for Snapchat. Um, kids are under the impression that when they send a Snapchat, obviously it has a time limit on it and then it disappears. Uh, that is not the case. It's, it's held in a server and it can be retrieved if it's needed. Um, and, and that particularly is, we, we have a lot of issues with uh, sexting uh, and revenge porn. I know that uh, lots of parents like yourselves probably think my son is not involved in anything like that. Uh, I deal with a lot of parents uh, who, who feel that way. Um, and they're, hopefully they're not, but um, it's something that um, does come to the fore a lot uh, in terms of sending uh, nude images uh, to each other. Obviously that is very serious if they're under the age of uh, 18. Uh, that is an indecent image of a child. Uh, that can be accessed uh, by hackers, etc. And uh, that becomes a very, very serious thing. Um, and just to touch as well on revenge porn, uh, we have seen this kind of thing in Jersey, um, whereby uh, those in a relationship have sent each other images or videos and then that relationship has ended and uh, they still have access to these these videos and then they share them uh, in public uh, in order to shame uh, their ex-partner. Um, that is something that we take very seriously in the police and uh, it is a breach of all sorts of laws and data protection um, and it is something to be aware of uh, for you as parents just to be aware of what your, what your boys are doing on their phones in their rooms um, and try and be involved in that area. Brilliant. Uh, th thank you, uh, Joel. Really appreciate it. And, and just a message to the parents, if you have any questions on anything, uh, just to, because we've had a few late joiners, anything at all that we cover tonight, if you'd like a little bit more information, you have a question um, to, to Joel, to, um, to any of my colleagues here, please just write it into the chat bar. We are very, very happy to pick these up at the end of the session. Um, this is a very much an interactive session and you know, we want, we're here for you at the end of the day with questions that you have. So um, I will uh, hand you over again now to uh, Mr. Gosling, who's going to talk to you a little bit about what we do in school in terms of monitoring um, online behaviour. Mr. Gosling. Yeah, hello there again. Uh, basically, we monitor the boys' use of computers and their online activity on a daily basis. So at the end of each school day, I will go through the logs and check uh, what boys have been searching for. In particular, I'm looking for searches that would link to extreme violence, possibly drug use, obviously. Uh, pornography, etc. Now we've got two main forms of software that we use for that. We've got Impro, which is basically uh, linked to our computers in school, uh, which I monitor on a daily basis. And then we've got Lightspeed, which I'm sent by the education department, which highlights keyword searches and con possible concerns. Now, as I've said, they're checked daily. Now, in most cases, if I have a concern, I will send the concern to the relevant housemaster who will follow up. What you need to understand as well is that many of them are what I would describe as false alerts that can link to biology lessons or physics, etc., and not actually a key concern for us. But if they're not subject related and it is more serious, then housemasters will contact parents. We see it as a well being issue where we identify what the possible concern is. The parent will then have a conversation with their relevant son and then they can contact us again if more support in school is needed or we need to follow up with that student. If it's a less serious issue then the tutor could be involved as well but on the more extreme element if it is a child protection issue then that would come to myself as the designated safeguarding lead. I would then possibly liaise with Dr Hughes or our inclusion coordinator Mrs Watkins and we have the school counsellor and a whole range of support in school if we need that to support our students. Thank you. 
Now, obviously there's a range of social media sites that students are using. Uh, myself, Mr. Parks and Dr. Hughes, we're all parents ourselves. I've got an 11 year old and a 10 year old and already I'm being pressurized for access to things like TikTok, etc. And I know it's not easy, but obviously there is guidance on when students should be or young people should be allowed access to some of these. And there's a whole range of social media uh, uh, <coughs> platforms that can be used by students. Uh, some have become more popular, some more fall out of favour. Facebook is not as popular as it once was. I remember a couple of years ago I had to deal with a student who had a thousand friends on alleged thousand friends on Facebook that all automatically raised concerns and the age with the parents and obviously they didn't have a thousand friends. Uh, but it's that kind of issue that can pose a problem. Uh, PC Basketball has already raised the issue of Snapchat where we've had to deal with issues where the students feel that they can make comments, uh, negative comments to others where obviously that's not the case and those comments have been kept by other parents and then it's brought into school. If these kind of events happen outside of school and our students are involved in that, we do see that as a school-based issue that needs to be resolved by parents, students and the school working to closely together to ensure our students are protected. And then obviously we, you can see the range of social media sites there and with the relevant ages uh, recommended next to them. So points you may wish to consider, uh, I just want to emphasize, uh, there's a whole range of issues to consider with this, but some key points I think that are worth raising. Uh, the first one there is the access of instant marketing and messaging your son may get exposed to in the coming years if, when, whilst using social media. Uh, they may, your son may develop a digital history of an 18 year old when they're only 13. Uh, users of any app that collects personal data should be 13 years or older in terms of the guidance. Uh, from experience, we can see from the fourth bullet point there that students under the age of 13 often don't fully realise the impact of what they're doing, what they're searching and what they're uploading to these sites and how it may come back to haunt them in future years and particularly if they're acting illegally. <coughs> um, obviously in any cases such as this we do liaise closely with outside agencies and with the police to help resolve such matters. Um, the, the, the last bullet point is probably the most significant is that often at this young age they can make themselves to, vulnerable to inappropriate attention and um, particularly from adults who may be seeking out and looking through these sites to make their connections to younger people and it's something that we all need to be aware of and monitor carefully. Okay, so Mr. Parks is going to um, now speak about something that's probably very, very close to all of your son's hearts. Maybe not all, maybe that's a slight generalisation, but certainly talking to a lot of boys in the school, gaming is, is, is right at the top of their agendas. So, uh, Mr. Parks. Okay, so obviously gaming is um, something which is significant, certainly in my household and many of yours as well. Um, I think that the key issues here that I'm wanting to talk about are not games that are age appropriate, not games that are things that people you know, don't have any issues with. Um, Literally this week, uh, my 14 year old son has come and requested that he download Call of Duty uh, and Grand Theft Auto. Now, Grand Theft Auto, it, it's something which I think many of the boys will see on YouTube. They will see their older friends, older brothers play, not fully understand what's happening, see the exciting parts of it and think that it's okay. But there are significant aspects to these games. They're 18 for a reason, uh, they do contain Quite significant violence. In some cases, it's not very many computer games, but certainly Grand Theft Auto is one where there is a lot of drug use, there is uh, sexual imagery, and things that you can do interacting with the artificial intelligence within the, the game that is not certainly age appropriate or, or things that these boys should be looking at. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, I think, is, is the the instant messaging and the fact that people will go on live calls whilst they are playing these games. Um, there are things called Discord, or there's a piece of software called Discord and House Party in particular, which are not necessarily linked to the game, but it will allow the boys to play uh, whatever game they're happy to be playing, whether that be something like Fortnite, which may be seen innocuous, it may be that it's age appropriate, but the conversations that they will be having in and around while they're playing those games can often be inappropriate. Uh, they can also be linked with people who are not necessarily their friends. They could well be, you know, adults. These, these games are played by millions and millions of people worldwide. Um, they could be being spoken to in ways that are 
not appropriate for their ears. Um, and they could be being asked to do things, whether that be in game, out of the game, that are not appropriate for the things that they should be doing. Um, I suppose they're then leading into that. Um, this is something that you may or may not be aware of. Um, Tor software and, and accessing something called the dark web. Um, there are lots of misconceptions around this. There are things in the media, things in films where people believe that you, just because you go on the dark web, you are immediately accessing uh, huge amounts of criminal behavior. You can suddenly you know, go and buy all sorts of drugs and guns and other things which are not particularly pleasant. Um, I think I would say that this is a common misconception. It is not easy to access that sort of material just by going on the dark web. Accessing the dark web itself is not particularly difficult by the use of Tor software, certain operating systems, and to be perfectly honest, by going onto YouTube for five minutes and learning how. However, once you do get on there, a lot of the content is there um, is not actually criminal related. Um, but the thing to be careful of is that it, it could be. And it's not something that I think really people under the age of, well, even school age, I would say, really should be looking at. Um, I have put towards the end of the presentation some links to common misconceptions and the things that are accessible in there, but I don't really want to talk too much just in case I give anybody ideas. Um, the, the main thing is to, is to, I think, the last bullet point, if your son or somebody that you know is accessing a Tor browser or is interested in accessing a Tor browser, to have a conversation with them and to try and find out why. Um, many of the websites that are on there or the areas of the dark web that so say are allowing for illegal interactions with people, with criminals, with drugs and all those kinds of things, a lot of them are actually set up by law enforcement agencies to catch vulnerable or people who just don't really know what they're doing. Um, and the actual real criminal activity is, is still very, very difficult to find, even within the dark web. Okay, so um, thank you, Mr. Fox. Um, back to Mr. Golding now to talk a little bit more about what we do um, in school. Okay. Now, obviously, we do have quite comprehensive e safety policy, and we follow guidance that is issued by SARPS as well. But basically, any issue where students have been brought into uh, being distressed, harassed, or bullied, as they would be if it happened in the playground, etc., we find we would deem as being completely unacceptable. We would implement a counter school counter bullying strategy. We'd work with the victim, but also with the perpetrators of that. Now, just because it may happen during the school holidays, or just because it happened at the weekend, if it's outside of school, we will still see that as a school based issue and we would bring in measures to support our students. I do would like to emphasize as well that we do this in, a, in the context of creating positive behavior amongst our students. As I said in the previous slide, educating our students to use social media, et cetera, in a positive way, but not in a negative way. So then if you look at the second uh, uh, bullet point, it's already been suggested that, that the dangers of posting photographs, PC basketball raised that point as well. We obviously, the third bullet point, we can't have students posting information about staff or making negative comments about staff or fellow pupils, et cetera, in websites or in web blogs about the school. It brings the school into disrepute. It can have a really a negative impact on other students as well. And it's something we need to reduce to an absolute uh, minimum. Uh, we can't have malicious attempts to undermine other students' work, et cetera, or intentional uh, downloading or creation of viruses to disrupt our school systems as well. So our safety, safety policy does kind of cover a range of different issues uh, where we can then implement uh, relevant school policies to deal with that and to prevent these kinds of things from happening and to reduce them to an absolute minimum. So warning signs, if you, uh, as I said, we're parents ourselves, the kind of signs I would be looking for uh, is guidance is provided by CEOPS. But if you look at the bottom there, uh, we've got the common warning signs that you can, be, that you can see in children. Uh, do they become very secretive regarding their online activity? Are they, are they being open with their parents? If you ask to look through their phones, are they being very resistant to that? Um, I would 
recommend that you do ask your sons to sit down with them in the front room to go through their phones to make sure everything's okay. If they're using it appropriately, they wouldn't have anything to hide. If they're very resistant to that, then there could be an issue. Um, when you walk into their bedrooms, are they switching screens on their device when you approach them? Um, are they becoming more withdrawn or angry after using the internet or, or, uh, for long periods of time? Do they appear to be tired uh, after using, and for example, too much gaming? I've had students who have been gaming late into the night, they come into school the next morning, they're tired, they can't focus properly. Are you seeing those kind of warning si signals at home? Um, do they have lots of new phone numbers or email addresses on their device with people that they may not know as well? Uh, often the friends are restricted to uh, double figures at most. If you start looking and we've got friends, so-called friends that are going into numbers of hundreds as we had, as I explained earlier with a Facebook scenario, then that could raise an alarm as well. So there are some warning signals that we should be aware of that should act as a possible means to trigger further action. Okay, well, um, thanks to all my colleagues. I mean, I, th I think I'd just like to sort of summarize and saying that, you know, we've spent a lot of time tonight talking about the potential negative consequences of, of internet use and online activity. Let's not lose sight of the fact that we are living in a, an age that is absolutely incredible in terms of the internet and the opportunities and knowledge that it can provide our young people. And, you know, we build in use of the internet and online resources to every, everything we do at, at the school. Um, the purpose of this evening isn't to, isn't to scare, um, it's to make you aware, um, to, to bring in a little bit of quick rhyming there. Um, it's, it's very much to help you to understand uh, what the world is around there, because let's face it, for many of us, we are not necessarily comfortable or completely, um, uh, you know, au fait with some of these, um, uh, some of these apps, uh, some of this online activity. So, um, please remember to strike a balance. It is, it is very much a fantastic world of opportunity out there. Particularly, I go back to what Mr. Parker was saying about gaming. Many children these days um, build very strong friendship groups. And particularly in lockdown, a number of our children have, have actually found real solace in the, in the gaming world, being able to communicate through that means. Um, we're not saying that these interactions are necessarily bad. We're saying that you just need to be aware. Uh, we're here to help you uh, to monitor that activity. So. In terms of general tips, uh, um, to, to sort of draw this evening somewhat to a close, um, trust your child, please do, um, but monitor them. Um, you know, keep an eye um, if you spot any of those warning signs that Mr. Gosling was talking about or anything that my other colleagues have mentioned tonight. Um, do feel free to uh, speak to us, obviously try and speak to your child first. Um, limit electronic devices to certain areas or certain times. I know many of my friends that are uh, their parents um, set very stringent limits on that. And I think if that becomes the norm, that can often be quite a good thing. And that, that, that predictability in terms of when you use devices and uh, particularly using them in, um, in open spaces, uh, you know, in your lounge, in your dining room and so on, uh, can reduce that, that air sort of aura of, of sort of secrecy. Third point, I think is probably the most important of all. Um, encourage open discussions with your children. You know, that, that is really important. Uh, my daughter's only six, but, uh, and I'm, I'm some way away from those discussions yet, but you know, it's really important um, when she starts to pick up these devices now in the next few years that, um, that I'm open with her. And I know we are all try to do that as parents. Um, one little uh, point there about the blue screen, you might have read a lot of, uh, about this um, in the media about the disruption to melatonin um, and, uh, and sleep patterns. Now, if your child is using um, screens a little later than, um, than you would perhaps like, um, there are options on, um, on phones and devices to turn uh, onto a night shift, which turns the blue screen into an orange background and that uh, reduces the disruption to melatonin production and that leads to better sleep patterns. So that's something you can always do a quick search on that online to find out about it, or you know, by all means, um, give, us a, give us a call, we can talk you through it. Um, and just to go back to what Mr. Gosling was saying, just be aware of new friendship groups. Of course, our children are growing. Uh, they will develop new friendships, new contacts. That's really important for them in their overall development, but just be aware of the, the rate of new friendships. And if there's something that looks particularly suspicious, uh, revert back to point three there, encourage an open discussion with your children. Um, as my colleagues mentioned, we've got a, a series of uh, what are hopefully very useful links for you. Uh, we will make all of these available to you through the uh, newsletter on Friday um, with some resources and also this presentation um, recorded as well. 
Um, but again, if you are at all unsure, you'd like any additional clarification, please get in touch with the school. Um, you can speak to any of us, um, no problem at all. We are very much here to help. Now, um, you've been um, incredibly patient and, and sitting there and listening to us um, for the last um, half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Um, if anybody has any questions specifically, um, please feel free to type them into the chat bar now. I'll give about 60 seconds um, to allow you to do that and I can fire them to my relevant colleagues. Um, but if uh, there are no questions, that's absolutely fine or you don't feel that you want to share them now, um, you can always uh, follow up with us um, another time. So I'll just, um, I'll just wait for 20, 20 or 30 seconds now to see if anything is coming in. And um, after that, we will, we will draw the uh, evening to a close. So whilst that 20 seconds is ticking across, I'd like to say an enormous thank you to you as parents for joining us. Um, that was great. And uh, I'd like to say an enormous thank you to my colleagues for giving up their time on a, on a cold, dark evening close to Christmas to, uh, to help uh, talk you through some of these issues. Uh, so with no questions, um, thank you very much for coming in, listening. Thanks again to my colleagues, and I wish you all a very uh, safe evening. And if we don't speak to you before, a very Merry Christmas. Thanks very much, and good night.